take a look at the Juniper Monitor command, or specifically the Monitor Traffic command. Now, before we continue with the video, uh, if you like this video and you like the tutorial, hit the like button. If you want to comment, please do. I welcome all comments. If you want to share the video amongst friends, family, colleagues, etc., please do. And last but not least, hit that subscribe button. It's down in the bottom right hand corner. You can't miss it. Okay, so on with the presentation first. Hi, so welcome to the presentation of the monitor command. So today we're going to discuss this command. What does it do? When do we use it? And how do we use it? So all of these questions and more are going to be answered right here in this video. So keep watching. So for this tutorial, um, I've added in a couple of extra routers. They're all MXs again. So I've labeled the middle one as tutorial. This is the one that we're going to be utilizing the monitor command on. I've got tutorial two and I've got tutorial one. That's the topology. These are the IP addresses being utilized. So if you want to copy this, then please do. So there are many, many options to the monitor command. So for the full monitor command set, you can find it here at uh, https www.juniper.net forward slash documentation forward slash us forward slash english forward slash software forward slash junos forward slash cli reference topics ref command monitor dash traffic dot html so monitor itself can only show output to the cli for traffic destined to the router itself or to the routing engine. It can't or it cannot capture transit traffic or traffic passed by the PFE, the packet forwarding engine. Uh, so utilizing the monitor command can cause heavy CPU usage, so use it with caution. Not it always will, but it can do. It depends on what options you are utilizing. So for the purposes of this tutorial and to keep it as short as possible, we're going to concentrate on the traffic portion of the command, which you'll also find in that link as well that I said at the beginning that's at the top of this screen. So the command is utilized in the format monitor traffic, then you're given an option and an expression. OK, so here's some examples that we're going to look at on the systems shown in the topology on the previous slide of this presentation. So we're going to look at monitor traffic matching port 22, no resolve. So what we're asking for here is we're saying, well, show me information coming in to this actual system that I'm monitoring traffic on, on port 22. So the SSH port. And the no resolve just stops DNS lookup or any reverse lookups, which can actually slow it down quite a lot. Now, the reason we would use the monitor command in these situations here is because sometimes looking at Wireshark traces and other information doesn't give you exactly what you want. And you might be asking, well, is the traffic actually hitting the system I want it to hit? So with regards to that, we can look for a port number. Number two, we can look for an actual protocol. Um, so again, the no resolve. We can look for traffic matching on an actual host. We can look for traffic matching a network. We can look for traffic matching a port, but on an interface in this case, so we can specify a specific interface. We can also ask for this information to be written to a file that will be held within the system that we can then export and have a look within Wireshark for even greater detail. Okay, so as it says here for number six, it'll be located in the uh, shell and the var home and the username, whoever it is that happens to be logged on, it'll be located in that directory. So, 
there's further variations of the monitor command that can be seen. So we can utilize, for example, the not and the or. So this will not match port 22 or port 23. Again, we just utilize the no resolve. You can resolve it if you want to, but as I said, it'll slow everything down. We can match on destination host. We can match on destination networks. We can match on source hosts again, which is very similar to the previous one where it says host. And we can also match on the Ethernet MAC address. So now without further ado, let's have a look at some of these commands in action on the command line using the topology that we had a look at at the beginning of this presentation. So here we are at the Junos CLI of tutorial system, which is the one in the middle. And this is the one that we are going to be running the monitor command from. I've done a quick show configuration display set to show you the interfaces that I have configured to tutorial one with 192.168.10.2 forward slash 30. That's this end. So 10.1 will be the other end, will be tutorial one. And tutorial two is on GE004 with an address of 192.168.20.2 forward slash 30, and it will be dot one at tutorial two's end. I've also set up a loopback interface for a monitor test with an address of 100, 100, 100, 100 forward slash 32. Now, it's important for us to understand that across different Juniper systems or appliances, sometimes ICMP is dealt with by the packet forwarding engine and sometimes it's dealt with by the routing engine. On a VMX or an MX, it's dealt with by the packet forwarding engine, so you normally would not see any ICMP information incoming. However, there is a way that we can get around that. So I'm going to show you both methods, one where we can see it and one where we can't. So I'm actually, because initially I'm not going to choose an actual interface, it will see it as though the information was coming in on the management, which is GE000. So I will be pinging from my desktop to the management interface. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do monitor has to be run by the way in operational mode as you can tell from here it can't be run from configuration mode so we're going to do monitor traffic matching icmp and we'll do the no resolve because we don't want any dns resolution oh sorry it's my spelling no resolve so we're going to set that up ready to capture. So from my desktop, I am now going to ping that address. So from my desktop, I'm now going to ping the required address of 16.65. And we'll have a look and see what the result is. We'll only do the normal four packets. So if I do a ping, 192.168.16.65, it's pinging it. But we see nothing coming in on that interface on the MX, on the VMX, as can be seen. And the reason for that is, as I've said, it's because the routing engine isn't dealing with that. The packet forwarding engine is. Now, what we can do to get around that is we can do a packet size above 1500 so that we ensure that the packet is broken up and then the routing engine has to deal with that. So let's have a look at that in action now. So if we do ping 192.168.16.65, and we're going to give it a packet size of 2000 and we'll have a look at what happens now. And now we'll notice the information has come in and it tells us um, where it's headed for. It tells us where it's come from. OK, it tells us all the information that we 
need to see there. Now, if we stop that monitor for the moment and we have a look again at the end there, what can we add to this? Well, we could do a brief or we could do a detailed and an extensive. So let's have a look at the difference there. Let's have a look at a detail. Let's see what we get with the detail. And let's bring this up again. And we'll do this again. We'll run this again. So now you'll notice the type of service. We get a lot more information with regards to the information that's coming in. Okay, from my desktop. So once again, if we stop this and we put in there, let's have a look at extensive and see what information this gives us. So you can have a look at different depth of information that you want to actually view with this. So again, let's have a look at what we get this time. Now we get an awful lot more information with these packets that come in. So you can see how much information you can actually see from this. You can also have a brief. So we can also do the command brief. So let's have a look at what we get with brief. And that just gives us the basic information that we originally had. Okay, and that's the brief. So you can use extensive detail. It depends how much information you actually want to view. So now let's have a look and see what happens if we choose to have a look at this from a different interface. So let's do monitor traffic interface GE-001 matching ICMP no resolve. And again, we're going to do it at the 2000. And as you've noticed, we do not see any information coming in. And that's because I'm pinging through the management interface of GE000. If we go to tutorial one, first of all, let's have a look at the configuration here. And we have a look here at the address. So we've got 10.1 and we know it's GE001. So if we ping 192.168.10.2 size 2000. So let's do a continuous ping and let's see what the results are. And we see this coming in and we actually see the addresses again from 10.1 look and we see that it's ICMP. So we can stop that. So we see that coming in from this address and that shows you how you can do it on the interface. So this is how easy the command is to use. But um, as I've said before, this is on a very, very simple system. Um, if you've got quite a large network, you may well utilize quite a lot of CPU. So the last thing we want to have a look at, there's no point going through every command because they're exactly the same as this. So the next thing we want to have a look at though, is we want to, let's just say we want to have a look at that again, but this time what we're going to do is we are going to write to a file. So we're going to write a file and we're going to call this, um, I don't know, let's just call it test.pcap. And we're going to run the command. And again, we'll do the same from here. We're going to go back and have a look at what's going on. Now, we're not actually going to see anything here. And the reason we're not going to see it is because it's actually writing it to the file. So... 
let's stop the ping from here. Let's go back to tutorial. We'll come out of that. And we're going to drop into the shell at this point. So you're going to learn a new command. So we can do start shell. And we've dropped into the shell. So because this is Linux, we can do present working directory, PWD. Where are we? Var home clive ls minus la. Let's list what's in there. And there's test.pcap. So let's vi that. Let's vi, or actually we'll cat it. So we're just viewing it, test.pcap. And actually we're not going to see that because it's actually in the format of a pcap file, which is for Wireshark. So that's my mistake. My apologies there. We're not going to be able to see this in here. But we can copy that file out. We get that file out and we can put that into Wireshark and we can view the content to get back to the CLI as per what we would have to do if we were on as root, we simply put CLI and we are back to the system. That is how we can utilize the monitor command. As I've said, have a play around with this, not on a live system initially, unless it's a system you don't mind playing around with, go to the link that's also in the description that gives you every command that's available for the actual or sorry every sub command that's available for the monitor command okay so that's the way we can do that if you actually enjoyed this video or you feel that there's some questions that you want to ask regarding the monitor command then please feel free to put it in the comments and please make sure you hit that subscribe button because I want to try and get as many of you subscribed as possible so that I can help as many people as possible. And then you get to see all the new, uh, all the new tutorials that come out. So thanks for joining me in this lesson and hope to see you in the next one.